Bill Collins. In, in the night? In the air tonight. Yeah, something like that. And what's the other one we played? It was Pete Townsend. Yeah, Pete New Townsend. New music, I think. We're very hip here on the FM side of things, aren't we? <laughs> we really know the music. But we really do know the music. We're going to get back into it. Yeah, it's just that we've been playing such bad music for three years that we kind of lost track. i got a big announcement to make now. All right, what is this? I've been waiting to hear. All right, the big announcement. I'm going to bring my wife on right now. Oh. On the new 92.3 K-Rock. Let's see. Is that you, honey? Yeah, hi. Yeah, you know, this has been all pretty embarrassing for my wife, me being fired and everything. Yes, how does she deal with this? It's been pretty bad, but, like, I thought that maybe she'd dump me once the paycheck wasn't coming in. <laughs> the paycheck was still coming in, though. Yeah, that was the thing. It was so great. It was kind of weird. Like, I was really kind of thinking, like, maybe I should just take two years off. Mm -hmm. We do club dates and stuff, and I would just get paid. And Robin would live in the streets. <laughs> That's right. I'd live in a tree or something. I really went back on radio for Robin. I hope you appreciate that. I do, Howard. Thank you so much. <laughs> Honey, I'm going to make the big announcement now. All right. Oh, no. Wait a second. Wait a second. Me and my yeah, wife... Yeah, we need trumpets, I guess, or something. My wife was a busy... Little beaver? Yeah. <laughs> While well, we were... Well, we were both busy beavers. Uh -huh. <laughs> Her more so than me. <laughs> In fact, my wife went to the doctor today, oh, and, yeah. uh, well, honey, you tell him. What? All right. <laughs> I heard the heartbeat. Your heart is beating? Whose heart beat? Oh, William beating? Schrader? <laughs> Whose heart was beating, honey? <laughs> A little fetus. Ooh. A fetus. Is that from Gunsmoke? Yeah, fetus. Fetus. I remember him. He had a beard. There it is. I'm going to be a daddy again wow. for the second time, ladies. Congratulations! I was about to tell everyone that I was going to be a dad again on uh, NBC, but yeah. then, of course, they fired me yeah. with my wife pregnant. Well, talk uh. about what it was like to come home and look at me and realize I was newly pregnant with having a two-and-a-half-year-old. And I had no job. Uh. It was like the worst time of my life. And you know you know what's kind of weird? Randy, the, the guy who was my friend who fired you who fired me knew that allison was trying to get pregnant yes he knew and that i think he kind of had an idea that she could be pregnant oh. and he fired me anyway and i just want to say didn't that care i just want to say that if you people in good conscience can listen to that radio station knowing this information <laughs> you know seriously if that's the people that you want to support well, go ahead <laughs> You know, I don't want to. I don't want to really get on here and persuade you not to listen to a certain radio station. Oh yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, you heard the heartbeat. Did it sound strong and male? Uh oh. <laughs> I don't know, male. We're pretty sure that this time it's a boy because I did everything. Wow. <laughs> we did seriously this seriously, pregnancy. Seriously, what did you do? We douched with baking soda. Oh, you did not. Well, I didn't. She did. <laughs> Although I do now do some baking soda. <laughs> That's why I smell so... Oh, so fresh. Yes, so delicate. <laughs> oh, goodness, smells as good as all outdoors. Yeah, you guys are laughing, but have you ever dished some baking soda? <laughs> really excellent. In fact, all the K-Rock jockeys... Uh... <laughs> Howard forgets to take it out of the box. <laughs> <laughs> the Madam and Meg douche of baking soda? <laughs> And Mark Coppola. <laughs> yeah, I just met him. Did you? That was the cat that was standing in there. Oh, really? Yeah. He says he likes to be called the Cope. The Coop or Cope or something. So I said, that's cool. I'll call you whatever you want. All right. We're, we're into getting along with everyone. The Cope, we'll call him. The Cope. And he's a nice guy. The Cope. So, so honey. did you guys yeah. find out? We found out. Um, well, I knew she was pregnant. How, how pregnant are you, honey? Now? Yeah. Um... No, tomorrow. Yeah, I don't know. In, the, in, like, I don't know, three and a half months, a little over three months. Wow. Thank you. And let me just say something. Uh, I, I nailed her pretty good because I did it, I think, like on the first try. Didn't I? Pretty much. This was the first time out, huh? Yeah. And I also did it on the proper day of the month. Uh -huh. We don't know that. Uh, how many days before your ovulation? Or did I do it during your ovulation? I think during. 
And what's that in the background? Oh, that's the inner office. Oh, that's back there? Oh, K-Rock is really soundproof. <laughs> I'm sitting and listening to the inter-office conversations. We did it on the proper day. In the right part of the cycle. Oh, we don't really know all that, how. Oh. I think we did. <laughs> I know it. I talked to Elvis Presley. <laughs> And we also um, had uh, deep penetration, mm -hmm. and she, I believe, orgasmed. I How did you get deep penetration? <laughs> what did you say? I borrowed Fred's genitalia. <laughs> no, I really, well, I mean, as deep as I can get. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> it was pretty deep. You tried. <laughs> yeah. They don't call me the human cucumber for nothing. <laughs> so we'll know in a few months. Yeah. yeah if it's human. <laughs> if it's human. <laughs> we'll know if it's mine. Oh, boy. I don't care if it's a boy or a girl. Yeah. As long as it's healthy. Right. Of course. <laughs> so there's the big news. That's right great. Here. Congratulations. That's, a, that's an exclusive at 92.3 K-Rock. That's the kind of information you'll be getting here in the afternoon. <laughs> All right, it's 4.37. You want to put Emily on? People haven't heard her in seven weeks. Daddy. Yeah, Emily makes her yeah, debut here today. Yeah, we'll go right back to Sesame Street. You know, Howard, Sesame it's Street is <laughs> conflicting with your show right now. Oh, she's watching Sesame Street? But come here, Daddy, come here. Say hi, and I'll put you right back on Sesame. Mm-mm. She, she, she's, like, totally addicted to Sesame Street. I know. I'll give you a cookie if you say hi to Dad. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, that's good parenting. Hi. Hi, Em. Hi. It's Daddy. Say hi to everyone. Hi. On the new 92.3 K-Rock. Say K-Rock. Hi. I'm, work I'm working at K-Rock. I have a job now. What? I can buy you toys. Are you watching Sesame Street? Congratulations. Oh, she said congratulations. Uh, in what language? <laughs> no. She sounds like Paco. Maybe he's the father. <laughs> I mean, Jess. All right, go back to Sesame Street. Do you want to sing Sesame Street? Oh, this is good. I don't know that I don't know how to swim. What? No, I'm not watching Sesame Street. She's not watching Sesame Street. And you thought you were the only, you thought Scott Moody was the only one to talk to Yoko Ono exclusively. <laughs> Emily sounds like Yoko. Right now she does. <laughs> now you're speaking better, Emily. Now, <laughs> did you, are you watching Sesame Street? Congratulations, I'm so proud of you. Oh, thank you, Emily. You kept talking over her talk. Only two and a half years old. <laughs> she talks wonderfully yeah. well. Yeah. All right. Well, listen, we got to go, honey. I love you. You're doing great. I'm proud of you guys. And uh, keep up the good work. Yeah. The new 92.3 K-Rock. Excellent music, honey, right? Mm, K-Rock. WXRK. Okay. Mm, I love K-Rock. Mm, mm, mm. My new home. My new home. Oh, I have a new home. Oh, I'm so happy I have a new home. Love you, honey. Okay, bye-bye. Oh, I have a new home. Yes. Now, how did your family do with you being fired? I mean... Oh, uh, my you... father was freaking out. Oh, no. You blew your career. You had a good job. You were at a top station. Uh-huh. I said, Dad, don't worry about it. I've got like eight to ten offers already for other jobs. Yeah, but no one's going to put you on in the afternoon, and they're not oh. going to be able to pay you as much money. Oh, no. So how do they feel now? Oh, I mean... uh, now, now my father's like, I told you things would be all right, but don't screw this up. <laughs> I don't think another station would give you a job. He's always amazed that other stations will, you know, yeah, that, um, desirable. 440 at uh, 92.3 K-Rock. And let's talk about what? We've got BQE. BQE. Oh, man, all our old sponsors They're are back. They're all back. Hey, this BQE is great for a bunch of reasons. Most of all because they canceled all their advertising on that other station. Yeah. Or did they? I guess. I don't know. I haven't talked to them. They better have. You know, they're New York's only 24-hour fitness and racquetball club, and we all work out there. Yep. I've been there a couple of times. I've played racquetball there. It's great. 17 racquetball courts, two full lines of Nautilus, Universal, and free weights, second to none. Also very nice-looking women and men work out there. No ugly people. So if you're ugly, stay away. Cellulite need not apply. <laughs>
Enjoy a relaxing dip in the heated indoor pool, a whirlpool, or an invigorating steam room. The BQE has it all. Take part in the famed BQE aerobic and aerobic program with Grandmaster Bill Louie. Yes, Rui. Rui. <laughs> After your workout, stop by the all-new Core 21 restaurant and lounge and let the BQE show you how fitness and racquetball and the sports of the 80s can be the social meeting place as well. The BQE is located at 26-50 BQE West in Woodside, Queens. Oh, it's so easy to find. <laughs> and convenient, too. What oh, a yeah. area that is. <laughs> and it's a beautiful area. No blacks. <laughs> Call now and take advantage of their special $1.95 a week special. That's right, only $1.95 a week for New York's only 24-hour club. Call 718-726-4343. 718-726-4343, a week. This is some facility. You have to see this. It's great. It is a great racquetball and fitness center. Thank you. Fred Newman for Briar's All Natural Ice Cream. Okay, listen up. We're going on the David Letterman show December 17th. Did you say David Letterman called you himself or was it his people? No, his people called. Oh, okay. They must be listening. I feel kind of bad that uh, I said those things about Letterman <laughs> show. It's just that I was feeling kind of burned. Well, yeah, they haven't talked to you. They didn't talk to you the entire time you were yeah. fired. Yeah, but we're going back on December 17th. Hey, do they have a TV in here so we can watch ourselves on the news later? No. Oh, man, this, this station <laughs> blows. I have a little black and white in here. You do? <laughs> yeah. Well, at 5 o'clock, let's start watching, because we're going to be on, I think, Channel 2 and Channel 7, 7 for sure. Yeah. And then Channel 9, well, no one watches Channel what 9. What time does Channel 9 have news? <laughs> Yeah, it's such an important coverage. <laughs> it's so necessary, isn't it? Do they actually think somebody watches them? Nobody does because I know that uh, I did some stuff on Channel 9 and no one saw it. Yeah. I even started getting crazy while I was fired. I started to do cable vision news. That was funny because you did it to advertise the fact that we were doing club dates because we had no radio station to support our club dates. Yeah. So you went on cable vision news or something yeah. and one person saw it. Yeah. <laughs> My mom. And she called and bought tickets. Yeah. Hey, let's give away some John Cougar Mellencamp tickets. I'm just going to hit a line here. I'm not going to go through... Uh... We don't have any special thing we're going to make people do to get tickets? Let me think. Well, we could make someone undress. Uh... <laughs> uh, I'll just give away the tickets. Right. I'm not, I'm not going to get nasty. You're on the air. Is Howard? Yeah. Uh... Want to see John Cougar Mellencamp? I don't really care for that guy. Oh, boy. <laughs> These Me are our people, Howard. These are our people. <laughs> I don't really like the guy either, man. I used to like him when he was John Kruger. <laughs> hey, I never told anybody this, but my, my last name really is Melon Camp, too. <laughs> What's the deal with the Melon Camp on this guy? All right, what can we do for you? I want to know, um, when you're on David Letterman, right, does he, like, shun you? Because he seems to me like he just, like, when at the end of a show, he just... Kind of, uh, like, 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 wow, does he shun you? Hey, did you used to listen to us on NBC? Yeah, once in a while when I'm working on uh, uh. four shock treatment. <laughs> oh, you're like a mental patient. No, really, really, what's your deal? What do you like, white trash or something? <laughs> There's a lot of white trash listening to this station, I think. You know, I mean, well, ro you know, rock and roll at trash. You know, certain the same stuff, the type of stuff you did on the other channel. What? It's the same show. It's on now your, yeah, now your FM. Now we can hear you without the static in the Yeah. Button. No, but, uh... <laughs> Are we, like, on the same wavelength? <laughs> I think it's Dweezel, Frank Zappa's child on the phone. The Dweez. Speaking of Zappa, while I was uh, fired, Zappa yeah. called me at my house, and we rapped for about 25 minutes. It's the strangest conversation I've ever had in my life. Does he talk the same way in private oh, yeah. as he talks yeah. in public? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I said, Frank, like, what, what's the deal? Do you have syphilis of the brain? <laughs> yeah. But no, Frank is a good man. Yeah. I mean, he's just like one of the few artists that called me at my house and really cared. Well, that's nice. And we spoke, and I'm going to have him on K-Rock as soon as, as soon as we can. He's really a good guy. Howard. Yeah. What about the Donna Vadusha? They fired her, just like they fired me and Robin. Yeah, but they were Coming planning to fire her. Yeah, I get a feeling they were planning to fire her. They put on a new Encopter girl at NBC, and I think they were going to stick us with her. Yeah. But they fired us, too. <laughs> I hear she's real bad. Everything about that station is bad. Everything sucks. <laughs> I'm so glad to be out of there. This is so liberating. 
I can't tell you, man. It really is. Blows working over there. I want to see the imbecile they hire to replace me. You'd have to be a you'd have to be an idiot to work there. They'd have to pay you two million dollars to work there. Yeah, if anybody's thriving in another market or at another station, why would they come to NBC to fight an uphill battle? Yeah. I mean, let's face it, no one's going to be listening to the station. They're all going to be listening to us at K-Rock. Thank you. And then ABC, um, they try to fit ABC talk radio. Yeah. Try to uh, put Bob Grant on. Oh, yeah, to fill the void. Like, Bob Grant is even a third ta more talented than I am. I, I mean, I have more talent in my pinky than Bob Grant. Even Bob admits it. <laughs> he even told me that. Oh, it's too much. You know who was really concerned about our being fired and was really upset to hear about it? Who? John R. John R. Gambling? Yeah. Is that what he told you? He was really upset. Gee, are you guys going to go back on radio soon? Are you sure? Is everything okay? Boy, if I ever did stuff like you did on the air, my dad would my dad would castrate me. <laughs> he would whip me. <laughs> I'm totally emasculated. <laughs> At least you guys still have something between your legs. <laughs> All right, I tell you what, let's talk about my good friend. Hey, thanks for the call, man. Hey, let me tell you about my good friend Albert L. Why can't I say his name? Albert L. Calistine. Maybe because you don't know him. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know this man, sir? No, he sounds like he sounds Jewish. He is Jewish, and you know what? Right. You must. Are you, what kind of job do you have? What kind of job do I have? Yeah. yeah. I deliver peaches. All right, then uh -huh. you then, then you're our man. Are your CDs down? <laughs> are you still paying taxes on your money markets? Uh, not recently. I see. Do you um do you know where to put this year's IRA money? Do you have an IRA? You sure? No, I don't have any yellow. I'm not a pitcher. Why don't you take your pizza tip money and put it in an IRA? Yeah, I'm sure he doesn't have a pension plan. Yeah, you need all that. Because my that. buddy Al Callistine, he knows all about it. He's president of Albert L. Callistine and Associates. He wants to put you into an annuity earning 10%, <laughs> no load. You know what that is. The no load is the good part. No, I'm sure this guy's a big load right in his pants. <laughs> In fact, all his friend says he's a real load. <laughs> a hundred percent safety, tax deferred annuity. You heard right. You can't believe it. he's speechless. <laughs> and they're still paying ten percent. Call the president Al Calistine personally now at 516-222-2992 or 718-291-6048. Tell him Howard told you to call. And do it now before the tax laws change and won't allow you to. Call Al now. That's 516-222-2992 or 718-291-6048. The time has come for the end of the spoon. Time for MediQuell for cough relief instead of liquids. 